This video is about 5G Link Adaptation, upon how to compute transport block size from MCS and number of resource elements scheduled for the viewers with some background knowledge in wireless communication. Assume that a UE is connected to a base station and base station wants to maximize its data rate to UE. In order for base station to decide the maximum data rate supported by the channel, base station needs to know the channel quality. For this purpose, base station sends a CSIRS signal to UE, and UE measures the channel quality from this signal. UE reports back the channel quality to base station by sending a parameter called CQI. CQI is a 4-bit parameter, therefore takes a value from 0 to 15, and higher value of CQI indicates a better channel quality. Upon receiving CQI, base station has to decide the number of information bits to transmit to UE. Higher the CQI, more bits can be transmitted from base station to UE. This block of information bits is called transport block, abbreviated as TB. Here onwards, in this video, the number of information bits is called TB size, and this video explains how to compute TB size from MCS and a number of resource elements scheduled. Note that TB size computation method is standardized by 3GPP, so that base station doesn't need to explicitly send TB size to UE. Instead, base station sends MCS and number of resource elements to UE, and UE does the same computation to find out TB size. Before proceeding, here are a few caveats about the video. This video doesn't cover the entire details of the link adaptation, but only gives you a basic understanding. For more details, please go through the reference is listed in the description. This video considers only downlink data transmission, not uplink data transmission. However, the uplink DB size is computed in a very similar way. Finally, this video addresses how question, not why question. That is, this video explains how to compute DB size, but doesn't explain why those computations came in the first place. Upon receiving CQI from UE, base station converts CQI to MCS. Both CQI and MCS are defined by these tables by 3GPP. Since both base station and UE must have the same definitions of CQI and MCS, however, the CQI to MCS mapping is implementation specific, but needs to follow two criteria. One, MCS spectral efficiency shouldn't exceed the corresponding CQI spectral efficiency. Two, MCS must have the same modulation scheme as CQI. This way, 15 CQI values have to be mapped to 29 MCS values. As an example, following these two criteria, CQI 10 can be mapped to either MCS 21 or 22. As a side note, if it is 4G LTE, we can stop here now. Because, in 4G, the computation of TB size is quite straightforward, since 3GPP provides a lookup table for TB size for each MCS and for each number of resource blocks. So, just fetch the TB size from this lookup table based on MCS and the number of resource blocks. However, in 5G, Things are more complicated since 5G uses LDPC encoder instead of turbo encoder used in 4G. So, we have a few more steps to do in order to compute DB size. Once CQI to MCS mapping is done, then the next step is to compute the carrier capacity. Assume that NRE is the number of resource elements scheduled for data transmission for PDSCH. After deducting all overheads such as PDCCH, DMRS, and CSIRS, then the carrier capacity and info is computed as the number of resource elements multiplied by the spectral efficiency of the MCS selected. The spectral efficiency is specified in the MCS table in 3GPP specification. Note that the carrier capacity is the maximum data rate supported by the channel. 
So, intuitively, the TB size shouldn't exceed the carrier capacity. But at the same time, TB size should match with one of the allowed input sizes of LDPC encoder since the transport block has to be finally inputted into an LDPC encoder. So, our challenge is to compute the highest TB size which satisfies these two criteria. To support wide range of TB sizes, LDPC encoder used in 5G can be based on either base graph 1 or base graph 2. 3GPP specifies which base graph to use based on N-info and code rate. Remember that N-info is CARA capacity and code rate is the one specified in MCS table shown before. So, if the combination of N-info and code rate happens to be within this orange area, we use base graph 1. Otherwise, we use base graph 2. Based on N-info and code rate, different procedures are used to compute TB size, as illustrated in this figure. For example, if N-info is less than 3,824 bits, then we use procedure A to compute TB size. Similarly, if N-info is between 3,824 and 8,448 bits, and code rate is above 0.25, then we use procedure B. If N info is too high, then a transport block cannot fit as a single input to the LDPC encoder. In that case, we need to segment TB into smaller code blocks, as we will see in procedure C and D. The next step is to quantize N info to a multiple of power of 2. As a mathematical background, any number X can be quantized down to the nearest multiple of Y as y multiplied with x by y floored. This symbol is floor operation to the nearest integer. Suppose x is between n y and n plus 1, y. Then y into x by y floored is n y. We use different quantization equations for different procedures. This quantization equation looks complicated, but let me try to explain it intuitively. In this equation, an info is quantized down to the nearest multiple of 8, or 16, or 32. The quantization step size is a power of 2, and depends upon the value of an info. Larger the value of an info, larger the quantization step size. For example, in procedure A, we use quantization step size of 2 power 3 if an info is less than 2 power 10, 2 power 4 if n info is between 2 power 10 and 2 power 11, and so on. We have different TB size computation methods for different procedures. For procedure A, TB size is simply the smallest number from a table specified by 3GPP, which is greater than n prime info. These numbers are based on negotiations between base station vendors and UE vendors in 3GPP meetings. Procedure B is quite straightforward. TB size is same as the N prime info. For procedures C and D, remember that the TB size is too large to accommodate as a single input to an LDPC encoder. Therefore, we need to segment transport block into smaller code blocks and each code block is inputted into LDPC encoder. The segmentation is done in such a way that the number of code blocks is minimized and all code blocks have the same size. Following these two criteria, we get number of code blocks C equals to the seal of N prime info plus 24 divided by max allowed LDPC input size. The number 24 is added since it is the size of CRC attached to the transport block, and max allowed input size is different for different procedures. Finally, in procedures C and D, the TB size is computed as 8C into seal of N prime info plus 24 divided by 8C minus 24. Again, the number 24 is subtracted since it is the size of CRC attached to the transport block. 
The multiplication and division by 8c is to ensure the TB size is a multiple of 8c. In other words, to ensure that each code block size is a multiple of 8. Observe that if n prime info plus 24 is a multiple of 8c, then TB size is same as n prime info. Computing TB size in this way satisfies the two criteria shown before. I hope this video helps you to get a basic understanding of TB size computation in 5G. Thank you for watching.